In a previous video, we saw that nodes are the smallest building blocks of your Godot games. You can think of them like Legos. Put enough together and you'll have a character, a car, a racetrack, an inventory, or anything you can think of. There are dozens of kinds that you can use to display an image, play a sound, represent a camera, and much more. We also saw that you can create a hierarchy of nodes and save them as a scene, a template you can reproduce at will. In this video, we'll look more closely at nodes and scenes to help you get a clear picture of what they are, because they're so central to good projects. And then, you will create and run your first scene. This lesson's part of a complete free course to get started with Godot, and there's more to come, so be sure to subscribe. That way, you won't miss out. Okay, so nodes have five attributes. They have a name, they have properties, which you can edit in the inspector or access with a script. Nodes receive function calls from the engine to update every frame, amongst other calls. You can extend built-in node types with new properties and functions using scripts. You can attach a node as a child of another. The last feature is what brings us the scene tree we talked about two lessons ago. I'd mentioned something about updates, so let me explain. Games work in a loop. Many times, every second, the game engine updates the virtual game world, calculates how everything moved or changed, then it paints it on the screen. This happens typically 60 times per second, although that can be more or less. This is how you get the illusion of movement and life in a game. There is a loop that updates many times per second and draws new images on your screen. What almost every engine does is to give you a function in code that dictates how an entity should update between two frames. In Godot, this function is available on every node. And I'll stop there because we will see it in another video. So we also saw that when you have multiple nodes together, you can save them as a scene. You can then create reproductions of these scenes in a game level, for example, in which case it looks a bit as if it was a node, even though Godot is just hiding the complexity to make our job easier. But in a sense, it makes scenes work as new and more elaborate building blocks than the individual nodes. You can then use scenes to structure your game's code however you want. Nodes allow you to make scenes, which will be the foundation of your Godot games. And so the Godot editor is mostly a scene editor. It provides you with many tools to edit 2D and 3D scenes, with 2D including both 2D games and user interface. A Godot project can contain as many scenes as you need. This can be just one scene for simple games to hundreds or even thousands of them for large projects. The engine only requires one that you will set as your application's main scene. This is the scene that Godot will first load when you run the game. We went over the attributes of nodes, let's now look at the ones of scenes. Scenes always have one root node, like the character in the example used so far. You can save them to your hard drive as files and load those files later. You can create as many instances of a scene as you would like. For example, we can create two, three, four reproductions of this character scene. You will now get to create your first scene and run it in a game window. When learning a new programming language, the first little exercise we do is typically displaying the text hello world, and so this is what we'll do. Nothing fancy, but in a few lessons, you will be making a complete game, so keep in mind while building towards that. All right, let's create our first project. I invite you to open Godot and we'll start from zero by creating a new project here. I'll call it my first scene and click the create folder button. So Godot creates an empty directory for me. This is a prerequisite to make a Godot project. You can change the renderer to OpenGLES2 because it runs on uh, everyone's computers or almost while OpenGLES 3 will run on more recent hardware, let's say. So click Create and Edit, and we're going to create our first scene. We just want to display some text, get our feet wet, uh, create one label node. And to do so, we're gonna head to the scene dock in the top left, and we have two options to create our label. We can either click the plus icon, which is always there in the top left of the dock, or we can click the other node button. As we don't have any nodes in the scene, we uh, have this option here, these four options, but we don't want any of these three, 2D, 3D or user interface. We want to create an other kind of node. So click that and look for label. You can press enter to create it and we get to the 2D main view automatically because 
uh, user interface is created in two dimensions. So we see our label, it's a little bounding box in the top left of our viewport with some anchors here in green, you don't have to worry too much about them. But with the label node selected, we can edit its text in the inspector on the right. And we want to set that to hello world. And the text appears, it's a bit small, but it appears in the top left corner. So now we're going to center the node in the window. So you can click and drag on the node, so you want to avoid clicking and dragging on the handles, which will resize the bounding box. Click and drag on the text. And just in case it doesn't work, make sure that the leftmost tool is selected in the toolbar. It's called the select mode. It's the little arrow. Now we have our scene done. That's all we wanted to do. I know it's not much, but <laughs> it's a start. And we can play the scene, we can execute the scene and all the code in there that is on the uh, label in our case by going in the top right and you have a few buttons. The first play button plays the entire project. It plays your game from the start. So it could be a main menu, something like that. Then you have a scene icon with a little play button inside and this one plays only the currently edited scene. So this one and you can click it or you can press the shortcut F6 and this dialog opens and invites you to save the scene before running it. So you can leave the default name and press enter and our hello world will display in a new window. This is a preview of what your players will get when you distribute your game and you can test that directly from the Godot editor. Okay, we'll do one more thing here is set our project's main scene as our label scene. And to do this, we can click the play button or press F5. And Godot will ask you to choose your game's main scene. So we're going to click the select button and select our label.tscn scene file. Same thing happens. Every time you would press F5 when editing your project, this scene that you set will run. There's a shortcut you can use to close this window it's F8. And so finally, I just want to mention that uh, this main scene that we set, you can change it anytime from the project menu, project settings, and run tab. You have the main scene path here, and you can click the folder icon to change it, just in case you want to change that in your project later. In the next video, we'll talk about scenes and instancing. We will see what it is, what it does for you, and you'll get to play with bouncing balls. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. And if you want more good content right now, I wrote a complimentary series to this little course here. It's on our website. It will teach you more about Godot and game development in general. You can get it right now. It's completely free and the link to access it will be on the screen and in the description below. With that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.